Okay, look, it's not quite as sexy and exciting. There's going to be lots of uh, great creative and graphics, but um, as you just heard, it's really crucial um, in terms of what you're going to do today when you walk away from here and also in the next five years. Quick show of hands, how many of you currently deal with Nielsen data in any way? All right, pretty much most of you. So the good news is that's your life's about to get a lot easier. How many of you are on the buy side, agency side? How many of you are buying media? Okay, hands down. How many of you are selling media? Okay, so it's about 50-50. <clears throat> one of the things that started this off a few years ago, and I was one of the people responsible for it, unfortunately, was that increasingly agency people were getting really pissed off by salespeople like me coming in and showing these amazing PowerPoint presentations about our new products and having all these numbers up about how many people went to news.com.au or Fox Sports or MySpace or Facebook and then how much time they spent on the site and how many sessions they were using, how many pages per session, etc, etc. And then down the bottom of the slide, if you've noticed it, there'd be like six different asterisks in about six point font. And one of them would be Comscore, one would be Nielsen, one would be Web Trends, one would be one-legged skateboarders living in Geelong looking at my website between 12 and 1 p.m. And you started to realize when you looked at the data that, you know, really these numbers are all over the place. And all the joking aside, what happened was um, a lot of people in media, particularly in other media, and I dare say it in TV, were saying, do you know what? You can't trust that internet. Their numbers are rubbery. And those are numbers, those are words that were actually used uh, for us. So what was happening was online advertising was growing. Um, it was growing pretty fast, but it wasn't growing as fast as it could. And when we spoke to the MFA, and in particular we spoke to the advertisers, we said, What's the number one reason that you're not spending more money in online advertising? The number one reason was because they didn't trust the audience measurement. And part of that reason was they didn't have <coughs> metrics where they could compare online advertising numbers to offline advertising. How many of you guys buy or plan or sell TV or radio or newspapers? Okay, hands down. So you'd know that you've got reach and frequency in those media. It's very hard to do reach and frequency in online. You also know that a cost per thousand in TV is a cost per thousand people in a particular audience. So if you're buying CPM on people 25 to 54, you're getting a people-based metric. CPM in online is a thousand impressions. So it's exactly the same words, it's exactly the same three-letter acronym, but it means something completely different. And you might think it's stupid because you're all super smart, but there are people out there who compare an online CPM to a TV CPM and go, hmm, I wonder why they don't actually add up and it's because they're completely different metrics. So currently online advertising in this country is two and a half billion dollars. Um, it's 26 billion in the US. Uh, it's 18% of the market here uh, and we think it's going to grow to be about 25%. It sits behind uh, newspapers and television in terms of ad spend and share uh, and that's changing. What's happening is that television spend is coming down, it's actually holding its place. Uh, TV spend is coming down and online is growing. And what we think by about 2014, so just in two and a half years' time, online will actually grow greater than TV and newspapers and will be the number one advertising medium by spend and share. That's only the case in three other countries in the world right now. Does anybody know which countries they are? Have a guess. US? No. UK is one. Brazil? No. Sweden? No. Close. Germany? Denmark and the Netherlands. Oh. Any Danish people in the room? I've got no idea why Denmark is number one. <clears throat> Any Dutch people in the room? I've got no idea why the Dutch are number one either, but anyway. Um, but the reality is that if online is to be taken more seriously than it is, and I think it's done a lot in the last couple of years, then measurement's got to keep pace. So what I'll just take you through <clears throat> is something we're calling making online measurement make sense. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but we think that the title captures what we're trying to do. Rather than just standing here and saying to you, oh, here's the new measurement, and you put this screen up and you get this number, and this number's different because of this, we'll let Nielsen do that because they're far better at it than us. Um, what we're going to try and do is give you the, the framework of why we've done what we've done um, and some other stuff. There were a lot of reasons that prompted us to do this, like I said, <clears throat> and we talked about the MFA and the agency people. This guy was a guy I saw speak at a conference in Brussels a couple of years back, and I can't quite pronounce his, his name, but that doesn't really matter, but <clears throat> he's the global e-business dude for the whole of L'Oreal, uh, which is a pretty major brand. 
And he's talking specifically here about brand media, but it's a really interesting quote because I think it applies to all media. <clears throat> and what he's saying is that online is being encouraged to do TARPs. Does everyone know what a TARP is? Target audience ratings point, basically a measurement point for TV. Reach and frequency. And we've been using those metrics, your, your forefathers, your predecessors, have been using those metrics for 60 to 100 years in selling, in buying, planning and buying uh, TV and newspaper advertising. Um, I think what's going to happen in the industry now is that we will move in digital towards reach and frequency, in fact we already have, and we'll move towards GRPs, gross ratings points or TARPs as they're called here, they're called GRPs overseas. And we'll do that because that's what my marketers understand. So if we're trying to get more money out of Unilever, Johnson & Johnson, Kellogg's, uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, Woolworths, Coles, all of these major TV and print advertisers who are not using online very much, what we need to do is really give them a set of metrics that they can understand. And those metrics are probably going to be GRPs or TARPs uh, and reach and frequency. But I think that's a phase that we're going to go through. It might last two years, it might last a bit longer, who knows, it might last less. And what I think we're going to get to is what George Edward is saying, and that is, what are we doing here? Are we taking the old metrics and applying them to the new technology? Yes, we are. Or should we be taking the new technology and applying them to the old metrics or the old media. And the reason I point that to you is that whilst we'll move along and do what we need to do to attract the investment we think that online deserves, you guys are the future of the industry. And I don't think anybody in this room would doubt the fact that the future is going to have digital at its soul. Whether you're planning and buying multimedia, which is probably what some of you are doing now, and most of you, if not all of you, will be doing in the next year to two years, digital will be a part of that, if not the actual central hub. So my point to you I want to throw out is that I want to talk to you about measurement for today, but I want you to think about measurement of the future. And in my view, I think this guy's captured it in one quote, and that is, how do we use the new technology and actually apply that to the old media instead of having 60-year-old metrics being forced onto the new technology? It's kind of interesting we're having that conversation in Google's building. So I'll just go through four things. I've got 25 minutes, I've been told, to give you time to ask some questions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about <clears throat> um, what measurement I'm talking about specifically, because I think there's three buckets. We'll have a look at why we did it, which I've touched on pretty much, what's new and what's next. I just want to be really clear here that uh, we think there are three types of measurement in online. There's web analytics, which is pretty much, uh, you have be familiar with, with Google Analytics, uh, other analytics products, uh, Omniture, uh, and other, uh, other products. And that's basically figuring out who's coming to your site, where they're coming from, where they're going within the site, how long they're spending, and stuff like that. We try and put that into a bucket of uh, user experience. So it's not really about using it for a media currency. In the middle, which is what I'm going to be talking about this morning, is the media currency part of online measurement. And that's about measuring audience from the point of view of making it a currency that you can plan and buy and you can trade as a commodity, if you like. And lastly, ad effectiveness. I think the great thing that digital does beyond any other media is allow us to measure the impact of advertising. So how many people saw that ad? How many people clicked on it? How many people shared it? How many people completed viewing that video? And more importantly, what did they do as a result of that? Did they go to a website? Did they fill out a form? Did they share it? Did they load it up on their social network? Did they comment about it? Or do, more importantly, did they actually walk into a store or buy a product online? Uh, or buy a product in a store as well. And I think that's the whole ad effect in this piece. I'm not going to talk about that today so much because those two buckets on the outside uh, uh, warrant a, a whole hour's worth of discussion themselves. So we're just going to concentrate on media currency. Web analytics, as I mentioned, there's a whole bunch of providers for that. Some of those names you'll be familiar with. You know things are complex and difficult when the dummy series comes out with a book on it. So yes, there are web analytics for dummies. And if any of you in the room think, I've got no idea what he's talking about. I should go away and brush up on web analytics, cheat, and go and buy the book online. Just don't let anyone notice that you're reading it. Okay. <laughs> Measurement that we're talking about. Look, some, these are some of the brands that pitched for the IAB tender that we did. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but we, we basically had a tender. Uh, we invited people to submit their methodologies. We measured it against a technical specification that we had created uh, in conjunction with the MFA and also the advertisers. Um, so these are some of the common brands. We've come a long way since then, haven't we? You guys don't remember that, do you? Because none of you were born. Nor was I. 
Um, and the advertising effectiveness stuff, look, there's all kinds of providers there. Some of those are common. You can see that people like Nielsen, Comscore, uh, Google aren't up there, but they provide a suite of products across all of those. Some of you guys are using different sets of products. Uh, really, you're going to be used what you're told to use, aren't you? Because it's an agency decision. Some of you work for global agencies, some of you work for local agencies. Um, but what I think is going to evolve, and what is evolving already now, is the tools that you guys have, uh, are going to have access to are uh, going to initially, I think, make life more difficult. But the idea is to pick the tools that work really well, mesh them together, and then start to use two or three tools that make your life easier. How many of you are using Excel spreadsheets to do planning and buying? Come on, hands up. How many of you are using Excel spreadsheets? It's shocking, isn't it? It really is. It's a great piece of kit, but for doing what we're doing, it just doesn't cut, doesn't cut it. Um, <laughs> This is just, I just put this in because I think it's quite a nice picture and it's funny. Um, but uh, this is also moving towards what we're calling paid, owned and earned. Um, and the reality is that what we're dealing with mostly, particularly from the buying side or the sales side, is paid media. But now you guys are realising that that's not enough. What we're realising is that if we put $500,000 into online media, we can now measure what we own uh, in terms of what the client owns. Uh, both on their own websites, on their social media websites, on their campaign websites, and also what media do we earn? How much exposure do we earn across social networking, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc., etc.? So you guys are having to measure beyond just simply what the stuff, uh, what, what you've actually bought. So why did we do this? I've kind of touched on this a little bit already, uh, just whizzing around the, the main reasons. The biggest reason is here, and I'll touch on this in a second, the two and a half billion dollars is being spent in online advertising right now. Uh, 1.1 billion of that is being spent on search. That's pretty much being done mostly direct by advertisers with Google, uh, less so with, uh, with Bing and Yahoo. You guys, uh, in terms of agency land, are spending about 20% of that, uh, not so much. And of course now there's specialist search agencies as well, which sometimes are within the media houses, sometimes they fall outside the media houses, as you guys know too well. Um, but the reality is that the display side of 600 billion, uh, million now, that's going to grow, that's going to double to 1.2 billion in the next three or four years. So if you think about everything that you're doing right now, think about the hours that you're working, think about the clients that you're managing, think about the number of campaigns that you're managing, think about the digital touch points that you're buying from, and think about all the reporting that you're doing, and double it. Did someone just say shit? <laughs> and so this is why it's important if, if we could persuade marketers to dump their money into online overnight and it doubled overnight what would happen apart from everyone saying shit the reality is it would crumble so we need to have some kind of infrastructure in there to build to build it so that it's like the foundations of a house you don't want to build a really great house with a swimming pool if the foundations aren't strong enough because eventually it's just going to crumble we want to have the best house on the block but we want the house to be functional and long-standing, so we've got to make sure the foundations are, are, are solid. And we think that measurement's one of those foundations. Um, as I said before, a number of you guys and your, your seniors were saying, look, we're fed up with seeing numbers of data on a slide. We just want to have one. Uh, we've got one in TV. We've got one in newspapers. There's about to be two. Uh, we've got one in magazines. We've got one in outdoor. We've got one in radio. Why can't we have one in online? Um, we actually had 21 people registered to tender um, which is just outrageous, and, and 15 of those pulled out and only six submitted. But it just shows you there's probably about 30 or 40 vendors around the world that in some way measure online audience. The market growth we talked about and I touched on a little bit, uh, the credibility I talked about, rubbery numbers, that we know for a fact there were senior television execs saying to media buyers and saying to clients, look, keep your money in TV. If you've got to do any of that online stuff, just do that direct response thing, that performance thing. Leave all your brand money in TV and do DR online. Uh, you can't trust the numbers. And what we're now seeing is we know that DR works. DR works really well. We also know now that brand works online as well. And we know that it works particularly well with TV and with print. So what we want to try and encourage is advertisers to actually allocate more money away from TV and print into online as well. Um, so we're trying to actually remove that argument away. <clears throat> we know from the UK and Denmark in particular, I don't know about the Netherlands, and Germany, even though they're not number one, but we know that where they went to a single currency or a single standardised metric for audience measurement, the market grew. Basically, people like yourselves, the planners and the advertisers themselves, they had more confidence in the numbers, they knew they were credible, they knew they were audited, 
and most importantly they could compare them with TV and newspapers and other media. But once they could do that, they basically then started to shift more money into online because they found it was more cost effective. Uh, and lastly, I've just touched on there about that, that comparability. I think the top one really is the crucial thing. We wouldn't have done this. When I say we, organisations like the IAB represents about 80%, 80% of our members are on the sell side and about 20% are on the buy side, including some of your agencies. We probably wouldn't have done this as quickly or as vigorously if you guys hadn't have kicked us up the arse. So quite frankly, this was driven by you guys. So you have now got what you asked for. You might be sitting there thinking, I didn't ask for this. Well, maybe you didn't, but some of your seniors did. Here's an illustration of those numbers from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, 2010, you can see that total online spend was two and a quarter billion. That might be quite hard for some of you guys to see. Uh, and we can see here the display was about 600. Um, what you can see as we go over to 2015, you can see here that search will be over two billion, um, display will be over a billion, you don't need to worry about classes, and total expenditure will be over $4 billion uh, uh, as well. Just to put that into perspective, a compound annual growth rate is the average percentage that something will grow every year over the period you're looking at. So what we're saying here is that display is going to grow 14% every year for the next five years. Who could tell me how much TV and print are going to grow every year for the next five years? TV is going to grow 3% and print is going to grow 1.9%. That's just outstanding. So there is a massive structural shift going on uh, in expenditure. And what you can see here is that acceleration in display spend is going to happen in the next two or three years. There's lots of reasons for that. Uh, measurement we think is one reason, but also we think there's going to be a lot more creative opportunities and also advertising and social media is probably going to drive that uh, along with video. In terms of where everything sits right now and share, newspapers have about 28%. Who can tell me how much the total advertising market is in Australia uh, a year? I'll give you a clue, it's in billions. If you don't know, shout out a guess. What is it? Lower. It's not the price is right. <laughs> Sorry? Higher. Nice. Higher. 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 Lower. 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 Thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half. You were very close. Did you know or were you guessing? So $13.5 billion is spent in advertising across the whole of all media. Newspapers has about 28% share of that. Free TV has got about 26% and online is now about 17%. In fact, the six monthly figures have just come out. That's now 19%, that's 24 and that's 25. So the shift is, is going on. That's just all about different screens and devices. How many people here have got a laptop, your personal laptop? Hands down. How many people of you have got a smartphone that you access the internet from? Hands down. How many people have got a tablet? Yeah. So you're accessing all of those devices um, on uh, multiple browsers. How many of you use more than one browser? IE, Chrome, Firefox, Safari. It's pretty scary, isn't it? So we've got multiple devices, we've got multiple browsers, and even some inventive dudes now in the US, uh, cars are being equipped, not with sat navs, <laughs> but with iPad holders uh, or tablet holders, <coughs> which sync, of course, in Bluetooth with their car system and with their smartphone as well. What that creates <coughs> is, apparently, in um, July this year, there were 115 million Australians using the web. It's not bad for a population of 22 million, is it? My God, we're multiplying. Everyone's out there doing it. Um, so the reality is that the number's just ridiculous, you know, absolutely ridiculous. And you can see back then, it was kind of, this is back in 08, so three years ago, it was still way over the actual population of Australia. Here's the population here. <clears throat> so one of the drivers was in realising that more people were buying more devices, more people were using multiple browsers on each device. <clears throat> we were counting all of that using a tag system, but of course the numbers were just getting utterly ridiculous. So that was another big reason for doing it. Here's an interesting Morgan Stanley projection as well. In 2014, what they predict is that the internet access globally will be higher from mobile devices than it will be from desktop devices. That's only two and a half years away. 
Just think about that, all the hours that you spend on the internet. You guys are probably already there because you're Gen Y, you're at the forefront, you're early adopters, you're in a country that has a easy access uh, to technology. But this is globally, every country in the world, when you add them all up, more people will be accessing the internet from mobile devices. So those are the reasons why we had to do something about online audience measurement. What's new? Look, there's a nice little shopping list here, which I'm not going to go through uh, all of them. Um, the key ones here are people-based. When I showed you that 115 million, it was unique browsers, UBs. It's just not a people-based metric. So we were doing a comparison of unique browsers, a, a technology-based metric, uh, with people through reach and frequency or audience with OzTAN panels and so on. So what we've moved towards now is a people-based measurement uh, system uh, and people-based metrics. It's now called Unique Audience. Uh, look, it's not a sexy metric, but it's a people-based metric. And you can actually compare UA with a tarp or with a, a person or with a thousand uh, in TV or reading a newspaper or magazine. What Nielsen have done, and they've spent 12 years doing this, is they've taken the best of panel-based systems and a tag-based system. I'm not going to go into technology here. If you're really interested, talk to Nielsen. Uh, they're going to come out and do a whole bunch of user um, interface sessions with you guys anyway, if you're their clients, and they'll take you through all of that. Reach and frequency, even though we don't think RNF uh, is ultimately where the industry will end up, we think that RNF is good for now, and it gives that comparable metric for, for advertisers and buyers with other media. Um, so you're actually going to have a, a credible way of doing an RNF now. You can pull up an RNF on your TV media schedule, you can pull up an RNF on your online schedule, and you can deduplicate them and actually compare the two. What you can then do, of course, is put in your fees or your costs, and you can actually do a cost per reach analysis, and you can do an effective CPM analysis across both those schedules. And that's why we think we're going to see a migration of money out of TV and print, particularly print, into online, because we're going to see effective CPMs a lot lower in, um, in online. And you guys know, if you want to buy premium over here, you can offset the effective CPM or the average CPM over here by doing some extended reach, higher frequency stuff. You can also reach light TV users. So for all those reasons, that's why we think that money's going to migrate. The big point for you here is, look, I think this is quite subjective, but Nielsen is saying the user interface is a lot more sexy. I don't know how you get a sexy UI for a data, a piece of data. Uh, but anyway, uh, the main thing is that it's improved. It's supposed to be a lot more user friendly. If you guys think it's crap, or if you think it's bad, or if you think it could be improved, you need to tell Nielsen because then they'll hopefully take all that on board uh, and they'll adapt it to your needs. That's boring. So, in essence, the five big things that uh, the new measurement system does, um, it captures data from home panels or measuring people's usage at home. It measures people's usage at work. And for the first time, it measures people's usage in other locations, libraries, internet cafes, uh, universities, shared home, uh, shared computers and other devices. We talked about it measuring people, not devices. Uh, we talked about it being comparable with other media, um, being a lot more accurate, uh, and also uh, the big one, of course, is that now we've got that people-based system and we can do reach and frequency, we can now measure video a lot more effectively, and I think that's really where a lot of the future is going to be uh, in terms of branded, uh, branded advertising. This is this merger of um, panel, the strengths of a panel and the strengths of tags. Uh, some of this will mean stuff to you, some of it won't. Um, I don't really want to spend too much time on that because I don't think it's, it's as important, um, nor is that really. Um, what really is interesting is that um, when we kicked in uh, the RDD methodology, so RDD is random digit dialing where basically a bunch of people phone people up and say, would you like to be a member of a research panel, yes or no? I think for every thousand people they call, they get about one. Maybe they get six, I don't know, I can't remember what the number is, but it's very, very small. It's very expensive, but statistically, it is the most robust system of actually con uh, creating a panel. So what they're saying here is they've got a merger of people recruited through that system and also recruited through online. Why do you think it's not okay just to recruit people online? Sorry? It's only one demographic. Yeah, May, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe a demographic skew. What else? What else is skewed if you're recruiting them from online? They're online yeah, they're online usage. So you could just imagine the TV and print guys, can't you, if we had an all online recruited panel? 
Well, of course your numbers are higher. Everyone's been recruited online. So what we're going to try and do is balance the way that we have the panel. And what we see here is the total population uh, in Australia has actually increased. If the population hasn't increased, what's increased is the how accurately we're measuring them. So we saw here 110 million unique browsers under the old system. Uh, NetView, which was panel only, just under 15 million people were being measured. And now when you bring the strengths of the tag-based system and the panel-based system together, you've got a far more accurate system of about 16 and a half million. So what you actually expect is pretty much everyone's site to go up between 10 and 20% in their audience figures. So if you start to see publishers coming out and saying, here's the new data from Nielsen Online Ratings, our site audience has gone up 10 to 20%, they're probably telling the truth, as long as you've got it properly sourced. So the great thing you can do now is, what I want you to do, is I want you to actively look for those lists of fonts at the bottom of the PowerPoint slide when you've got the dodgy salesperson in front of you. And if there's more than one, check out who they are. And if Nielsen Online Ratings isn't on there, you've got every right to say, hang on a second, where's the Nielsen Online Rating numbers? They're the only ones that have been endorsed by the IAB and the only ones endorsed by the MFA. And if they haven't got them, make them go away and come back with those numbers. Of course, if you're a subscriber, you can check them out yourself. It's a nice screen grabs that none of you can see, so we'll move on. <laughs> so what's next? Look, the big one is video. Uh, we think video right now is about 35 million that we're recording. Uh, that doesn't include YouTube, and it doesn't include Census or Telstra. So it's probably, video's probably up around the 60 million mark now. That's gonna go uh, over $200 million in the next uh, two or three years. That's still pretty small when you think that TV is three and a half billion. Uh, but what we think is gonna happen is that TV are holding their share quite well because they've launched the digital channels. Inventory is cheaper now on the digital channels. Uh, there's more uh, avails. Um, so you guys have got more access to, to, to get your tarp schedules up there. So we actually think that clients are gonna be comfortable with their TV schedules. What we don't think they're gonna be comfortable with is print. And the circulation and readership figures of Metro newspapers are dropping, as they are from magazines as well. And we think there's gonna be a migration most likely out of Metro print uh, and into online and probably into online video. And that will allow uh, advertisers and buyers then to access those light TV viewers and also to get your frequency up. If you're struggling with your budget, which everyone is, to get the frequency that you need on TV, then what you can now do is up that frequency and also incremental reach as well through online video. Uh, using the panel and the tag data, what will allow, that'll allow us to do is take all of that new data we've got now and cross, uh, compare it with the TV Oztan data and deduplicate it as well. Mobile, of course, is the next big one as well. Look, everyone's talking about mobile. Consumer usage is exploding. You guys are a testament to that. The reality is we don't really know how much money's been spent on there in advertising. Um, the figures range between 8 million and 50 million, which is a massive figure. Uh, my own gut feel is it's between 8 and 12, which isn't very much. But the reality is the percentage usage is about 50%. Uh, and a lot more videos being consumed, a lot more content, and a lot more social media. So what we're going to do is take uh, a whole bunch of uh, learnings from this measurement system and apply those to mobile as well. And it's not just about measuring mobile. You've got to measure smartphone, you've got to measure tablets, and then you've got to measure um, laptops in, in remote locations as well. And then what we're going to try and do is pull that together and then cross-match that to the online usage in the work and in the home. And then what you've got to try and do is, is deduplicate it from other usage for example, when IPTV comes in, when is someone using a tablet and when are they watching TV? The reality is that from what we're seeing overseas, they're gonna be done concurrently. So we need to figure out the measurement for measuring the audience um, uh, distinctly between devices and also their concurrent usage as well. Because what you guys wanna know is how can I reach, engage and influence someone, the same person, when they're watching Grey's Anatomy online, uh, sorry, on TV, and then when they're using the Grey's Anatomy iPad app as well and maybe even the next morning if they're doing something on their iPhone or their, their smartphone. So mobile and video are gonna be the two next big things that we're gonna have a look at. Here's just a snapshot of what we think is gonna happen. So uh, the retail industry, uh, the retail sector, so Coles, Woolworths, JB Hi-Fi, Bing Lee, Harvey Norman, they currently spend one and a half billion dollars in advertising on all media. Actually, that's not true. They spend one and a half billion just in TV and print. FMCG, how many of you have got FMCG clients? 
How many of you got retail clients? So quite a few of you. So FMCG, Johnson & Johnson, Unilever, Kellogg's, you know the brands. Uh, they spend 700 million just in TV and print. So $2.2 billion is being spent in TV and print to media by two industry sectors. Those two sectors together spend $70 million in online. So you've got 2.2 billion over here and 70 million over here. What do you think is going to happen? That is going to move to that. We don't know how fast, we don't know how much, but that will not be 2.2 billion next month. It won't be 2.2 billion next year, and it certainly won't be 2.2 billion in the next two to five years. Same with that 70 million. Now that we've got accurate measurement, and we've got measurement that you can compare all media with, we expect that flow to accelerate. So to sum up uh, and finish up, basically what we think is that whichever media you're planning and buying, whichever media you want to measure, uh, measure whether it's digital radio, print, tablets, or any other device or, or publication, we think that digital is going to be at the very heart of everything that you do. Um, whether it's one or two of those or all media, uh, it's clearly going to get more and more complex and measurement is going to be key. The bit we haven't talked about, that's a cute picture isn't it? No, it's not my son. Um, the bit we haven't talked about is engagement and, and that's really where we start to get into advertising effectiveness measurement. So just to recap, what we've focused on today is about trying to measure people so that we can use them as a currency to plan and buy advertising. How many people will this campaign reach? How many times will they be reached? And what's my ROI going to be? What's my effective CPM going to be? And what's my reach and frequency going to be? And how can I now compare that with what I would be doing on TV or print? And that then gives you an insight as to whether you're spending your money more and more effectively. We haven't talked about engagement. Uh, we haven't talked about advertising effectiveness. We might do that next year or at a whole other session. So just to summarise, those are what we think is changing. Uh, it's the most accurate system in 20 years. Um, it's a first. It's been deployed in the US and Spain uh, at the same time as Australia. So we're one of only three countries in the world using this so-called hybrid methodology. It's a people-based system. I think that's really, really important. Uh, it's comparable with other media. We don't think anymore that it's a barrier to entry for advertisers or for buyers. Um, we think it's a big step towards cross-media measurement. Uh, and finally, as I said before, we now think that with an accurate, credible measurement system, you can actually put digital at the heart of, of all the planning uh, that you do. If we've got time, I'm really happy to take any questions. Learn stuff about measurement because I did, and I thought I knew a little bit, and I sort of feel like I learned a lot. So, thank you so much for.